issue with the association of the MyPy AST, um, or at least, yeah, their AST representation uh, with the Jack AST. Uh, but I thought what I'd do is start by just describing essentially how compilation works for Jack. Um, so uh, let's, let's jump right into it. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is let's shrink the screen a little bit. Let me get, I'm just gonna do this in a messy way. I'm gonna use paint um, just to kind of talk about it and do some diagramming. So basically, um, you know, the nice thing about Jack is that it's completely interop, it's, it's, it's natively interoperable with Python. And by natively interoperable, I kind of just mean um, it supersets Python much like TypeScript supersets JavaScript, except uh, there's control of the entire compile pipeline. Right, so it it compile it essentially compiles to Python bytecode. Um, it's architected such that it compiles to by Python bytecode purely. Um, so, uh, you know, let me let me just diagram out the particular you know from through the lens of the thing that I need to fix, uh, um, like how this works. Right, so let's start with like a typical Python program. So when you write your Python program, let's say this is your Python file. Every Python file is a module. Um, that's kind of how namespaces work in Python. That's the conceptualization of a namespace is really in at the realm of a Python file, which is at the realm of a, of a module. Um, and, <clears throat> and so, you know, you have your Python file. What happens when you run this file in Python is it's, um, let's say it's not cached because uh, you can you know, Python will cache your bytecode so that things run faster or they start up faster next time. But um, what happens is it goes through a couple phases, right? So of course it's going to be uh, parsed, um, and then what you'll have is a Python AST at the end of that parsing, and then. Um, this uh, th this AST is going to have a full representation of the of the module, uh, and then so these are passes, right? I'm using this to represent a pass, um, and this is kind of high level passes. There may be more passes than it's a simplification. There may be more paths passes going on, uh, but essentially there's some set of passes, at least one, that'll produce an AST, uh, and then there's uh, bytecode that's generated based on the AST. So the AST is essentially um, code generated into Python bytecode, and I'll just draw that by using a, another square with straighter lines. So this is your Python bytecode, and then this is essentially what's run, right? Uh, it's a binary file. Um, uh, what is it, PyC? <laughs> uh, um, it's a it's a binary, it's essentially binary um, that's then interpreted in their eval loop, right? So the runtime, and I'll draw the runtime like this. So then this goes and runs on your runtime. Let's just do it like this. This is actually the Python runtime. I'll just call it PyRT, which is the eval execute loop. It's executing instructions. Uh, and this, this is a stack-based machine. You can Google all this stuff to kind of figure out like stack-based machine, bytecode, what is all that? Um, but uh, uh, essentially, it's, it's executing uh, this bytecode. Uh, and that's what's running your program. Um, it also keeps a bucket. Just as a side note, all of your modules, let's say this module has other dependencies. <clears throat> As you're running the bytecode, when it hits some other module that it's dependent on, it'll start it'll start the whole loop over, right? So this other module, then it'll read the file, generate the AST for that file, generate the Python bytecode for that file, and it'll keep all of these in a table. Let's call it sys.modules, right? Sys.modules, right? And these are this is essentially a dictionary. Um, of all of the module names, you know, my mod, whatever, mod, and then, um, and then this will actually be a module type object, which is uh, essentially, you can imagine it as your, your, your bytecode 
when it executes, it creates objects, right? Types, it'll create the functions, it'll create everything. If you have what I call module level code, which is just free floating code that executes, it'll actually execute that code once, but then it'll save the, the created types and the created objects from that module uh, uh, in memory, uh, memory that could be referenced through system modules, right? So this is essentially the typical so let's call this pi parse code gen, right? Code gen. This is a typical kind of pass, and then this is execute, right? So this is execute. <clears throat> so this is essentially, I'll just do, yeah, I mean, I'll just do a dotted line here just to make this like different phases or different representations of your program. Um, so this is essentially, um, this is essentially how Python works, right? So how does Jack work? Um, let me get another paint going uh, and I'll explain this piece and then I'll explain the problem I'm about to solve. So Jack, you'll have a Jack program. Now, and Jack is completely interoperable. This will probably be a little messy because I didn't plan this, so I'm just explaining. Um, so you have your Jack program, right? And Jack has um, it essentially has a representation of a module. So when you have a .jack file, um, you can think of this as a module. So the simplest way you could utilize Jack is to have these as a module. There's other details that you can actually split your modules across multiple files, but I'm not gonna get into that detail now. That's an optional feature that can help for better organizing the code in the namespace of a module which becomes useful, but we'll talk about that at some other time. Anyway, just for the sake of this discussion, uh, Jack is a module. This Jack file is a module, and then what happens, it's very similar. We then get a Jack AST, and this Jack AST has some special nodes that don't exist in Python. We'll talk about what happens with those nodes, but you'll get this nice AST that's a Jack AST, and then, so this is just, you know, your standard parse. And then what happens is this Jack AST actually goes through another pass, or let's call it set of compiler passes, that will generate a Python AST version of this Jack AST. Now, whenever there is a... <clears throat> whenever there's a special AST node, like there's some features of this language that do not map directly to a Python AST, uh, whenever um, you hit those nodes, let's, let's say this node actually implements a feature, like connecting two objects with an edge, right? So you can arbitrarily, one of the features of Jack is you can arbitrarily connect your objects any instance of an object, you can connect it in a graphical structure using a, a special object called an edge. And edge is essentially a class, but the class always connects to node type classes. Whatever, data spatial programming, all that good stuff, Python doesn't support it. So what happens then? So this then turns into essentially a function call, a function call, like let's call it func, for, into what I'll describe as, and it's it's just, it's I'm gonna do it as part of this kind of runtime. So for the runtime picture, I'm gonna put it over here for now, right? This runtime picture. So we had the Python runtime picture, it's still the Python runtime picture, but there's a special Python library called, I'm calling it the jacklib. Um, so let's call this jlib, right? So there's this Python library and then this is your Python runtime, uh, pi, pi RT, right? That'll execute Python code, right? So this is actually Python. So this turns into a function call that will take the results of say this node and this node and then pass it in for this special operator, let's call it, right? And pass it in. So we'll just call this like, I'll just put nodes here because it doesn't matter what they're named, but this func is essentially a func that exists in jacklib. 
that is then called and then the return of that funk is essentially what this this node would um, resolve to um, as part of the um, uh, it, it essentially dynamic when you're running the program um, when you run these programs all of these nodes actually return a result um, when they're executed and the result of that node would then be a call into the jacklib uh, so let me try something here so I'm going to cover up this funk um, just so we can keep going and we have some space okay so, and then I have to change the size. Microsoft Paint could be better. Um, okay, so, but let's just call this, this turns into, let's say, a funk uh, ASD node. Uh, and then, you know, you've got the original rest of your ASD here. So this is like, this is like the Python equivalent, except that that node is now a fun function call. So, then we have a pure Python ASD. And this Python ASD for... This Python AST for this Jack module um, is constructed assuming that there's this Python library called JLib, which is a Python library. Uh, it's a library written in Python. Um, exists, right? So these calls are assumed to exist. Let's just describe that. Uh, there's some, of course, bookkeeping stuff that's generated into this AST, like an import of that jacklib, etc. But, but whatever, it's out of scope. Anyway, <clears throat> there's a couple other things that then happen. So even though there's these, so and so, let's say this is the lower. Let's call this the pi lower, the pi lower pass. So this pi lower um, essentially will give you this pure Python AST. But we keep we keep the Jack AST around, and what's happening is this representation is kept throughout execution for now because it may be more it becomes more and more useful for things you might want to do from an analysis standpoint because remember there's these static analyses that can happen on the Python AST. Um, so, I mean on the Jack ASD, sorry. Um, and so we want to keep that representation throughout, right? We don't want to then only just be running Python, Pythonic analyses. You know, if you have special semantics that you wanted to write special analyses for, then you may need the information in the original ASD. One example would be uh, in the symbol table, you would want to maybe do the access modifier checks. So. Jack allows you to have public, private, um, and protected proper. And so those kinds of checks, you might want to have the representations, the, or the, the pure Jack representations around. So really what happens is you'll have uh, something that looks like um, the representation of, so we let's move this forward, right? So I'll just draw it like this, but let's move this forward so we'll have this this original AST, right? So this is the Jack AST, let's call this JST. And then this is the PayST, <laughs> PayST. And then we we link these nodes, right? So so all the nodes are, are kind of connected. Um, so you can essentially access the Jack AST from the Pi AST node and you can access the Pi AST node from a jack ASD node. So these are kind of, they're somewhat many to one mapped, but they're in the common case one to one mapped, right? So then we have this representation, which is all of this stuff, is really the AST representation that we keep with us. Now this continues, right? So here, jack is type safe. So it requires type annotations in certain places so it can do the type checking. Um, and kind of make that a tenant of the language. So one cool thing is there's, when you have this representation where they're one-to-one -one mapped, and a lot of this I haven't seen before. Uh, and so we're, we're we, may, we may write kind of an engineering style research paper 
around the design of this kind of compiler infrastructure. Um, so, I mean, it, just FYI, you know, so this is cool, right? Like, uh, I'm excited about it. Um, so, so you have this representation, and then we, we have this kind of, let's call it the static analysis pass, which includes type checking, sets of passes, right? Let's call it the SA sets of passes, which includes the type checking. Now, the nice thing about a static analysis type checking pass, right? Passes. It's, now, the nice thing about this approach is it's designed in such a way that you can lift the analysis on the Python AST into the Jack AST, right? So this is really cool. That means we can leverage the ecosystem of Python out of the box. What that means is let's, we, we can use type checkers that are built for Python to type check Jack. Uh, and this is part of the design approach of this whole stack. So what we do at this point is we'll take this, and I'll just draw this a little bit messier. We'll take this AST Right, that is a mixture of Python um, and Jack, whatever. So this is this is like two ASTs combined. That's this thing, and then we'll we'll run the Python part of the AST. Let's say this is the Python part through MyPy. I should have done this bigger, but it's all good. Just bear with just bear with it. Um, so that's the Python side. Let's say this is the Jack side. So we'll run the Python side through MyPy and do the full type checking. Basically, there is a very disciplined approach to faithfully assume and have congruence with the Python object model and semantics in Python throughout all of Jack's implementation. So what that means is all of this type information is relevant to all of the possible type information that you can have in Jack. So we do the type analysis in, my, in MyPy uh, and all of its static analyses. And then we raise that, we raise that information into the Jack representations. So because we have this linking between nodes and the nodes in the two uh, representations, when we get this MyPy information for the uh, Python AST, there's another pass in here that will annotate the Jack AST with the same information, right? So that we can have all of the type information and we can update the symbol tables for Jack. By the way, Python has its own symbol tables when it's doing its thing, but Jack also has its symbol tables as well, um, which includes information like access modifier details, right? So, but this, um, so this is really powerful. That means we can, we can piggyback on the great work that came from MyPy to get out of the box all of the powerful um, type checking capabilities uh, and then use that to be the type checking engine of Jack. Uh, and this has been built, prototyped, and is functional uh, and is um, prototyped, built, and is actually in the language today. So, um, so anyway, this is the part that I'm going to work on next, right? Because there's issues and I got to fix them. Um, as an FYI, we also, MyPy does actually create its own representation of the AST, right? And actually, we keep this around too. So we link, we link this too, right? So we'll actually have a third from the Jack AST. It'll actually keep around the nodes, the node associations. This is actually where the issue is. It'll keep around the node associations to the MyPy AST. So now we have we have our pure Py AST that assumes that there's this library. We have our Jack AST, which is the language proper, the AST for the language proper. And then we also keep the MyPy AST nodes around, right? And this is for now, like it's not really used for much because we, we lift the interesting information into uh, the Python AST um, uh, and, you know, 
Uh, so like and and the symbol table like that's actually part of the infrastructure. That's what we need to finalize and make work properly. Um, and that's where I have an issue that I'm going to fix with you guys live, probably on a, another session, and I don't know later today. Hopefully, we'll see if I get to it. Um, but this is essentially the functionality. So you have this kind of super representation um, that we keep around for now. We will call it later. It's fine to keep these ASC nodes around in a way. Um, but we take this and then we send that through code gen. Now this code gen, this code gen, uh, Right now, we're just leveraging Python's code gen, and we're code genning based on the Python AST. But this this code gen is architected in a way where it traverses, like we have full control over that code gen at the node level. And so we can do all kinds of cool, fancy stuff later to like add our own JIT or you know do whatever you want with code gen to optimize code gen. But right now, we're just... Um, we're just kind of using static, uh, like just standard uh, Python code gen as we go. Um, so then what you have is this Python bytecode that executes pure Python. And then where you need Jack features of the language, it makes calls into this Jack lib. Um, and it's, it's all type checkable. It type checks across the stubs, the type stubs of that Jack lib. Oh, and by the way, the Jack lib is actually completely plugged out. So you can actually rip out all kinds of parts of these features and re-implement them how you want. Well, features is the features themselves are out of scope for this conversation, but yeah, there's some really cool, there's some really cool stuff in there. Um, so this looks complicated. This sounds complicated, but it's actually quite elegant in my opinion, um, because really you've got your ground truth of everything, which is this Jack AST, and you're just essentially annotating this AST with its Python equivalent nodes, with its MyPy type checked uh, representations and information, with the symbol table as you need it, uh, it it's full symbol table uh, creation and checking is a, um, just a part of the pass infrastructure. Uh, and remember, these can be multiple passes, right? I'm just writing them as one kind of phase of comp compilation. Um, and that's essentially how it works. Now, what's the problem? So uh, the problem is right now, <laughs> I don't know why, we're going to find out. But right now, there's a piece of this infrastructure, the part that does this, this kind of, it, there's a pass. It's in this pass, essentially, the... Uh, static analysis type check sets a phase of the uh, comp compilation where we associate MyPy nodes with all of the Jack nodes. And for some reason, we are getting not a, at the very least, a one to one mapping. So we have Jack nodes that don't have associated MyPy nodes. I don't know why. It should be impossible given the code, but you know how it is. <laughs> all these things that seem like they're impossible, like, you know. You just, it's a, it means there's a gap in what you understand it's doing, right? So when you're like, I coded this perfectly, it should be impossible to get the result that I'm getting from the code. Um, often that's because there's just something that you don't understand. So we're going to go on the journey of understanding that uh, when I have the next session. But yeah, so this is, um, this is kind of the compilation approach and design. Um, there's also other cool tenets of this, like we can leverage the Python debugger, PDB, directly out of the box because of this association and linking between AST nodes. Um, and, you know, it's actually the Jack source file that you're actually looking at. It's, it's actually a really interesting, um, it's, a, it's a really interesting kind of design approach for supersetting Python. Um, and, you know, it's fully interoperable with every legal, uh, like, library written in Python. You can just interact with it natively because of this object congruence and because of, like, the assumptions of, like, the design of it. So that's, a, uh, that's like, super nice that you just, it really layers on top of Python. And then you can use, you can code perfect Python code. Actually, we, we are just finalizing a pass that'll 
automatically convert Python AST to Jack AST, right? So you can take any Python file and then you'll have an internal representation in the Jack AST version for any arbitrary Python file. And you can also render the Jack. So you can just take a whole Python anything and then just generate the Jack version of it. Of course, it would be sans. It wouldn't be utilizing cool features that Jack provides, but you know, it's, it's, it's good to have that proof of interoperability uh, and equivalence mapping, right? Um, uh, and I think the key piece that a lot of folks uh, kind of need to wrap their heads around is the fact that supersetting the language, right? So basically any Python program could be trivially converted into a Jack program and the features of that Jack, of the features that don't map directly to Python are realized in a library that lives in, that's a Python library, right? So that's the secret, you know? That's how you get to have semantics that, that are completely crazy, uh, but within reason with certain guardrails and rules, like you can't create objects that wouldn't be representable as a Python object, which isn't hard to adhere to because Python's Turing complete and people have built anything in it. So, um, so that's the, uh, that's the, that's that's how this works. Um, so uh, I think that's good for today. Um, and well, not for today, for right now. I'll probably be back on later and I'll just pick up where I left off. But um, that's essentially what I'm going to be working with and, and building.